Hey, welcome to Scoobytopia. Obviously, things are a little different this video. Today, we're going to test, do you watch me just for Scooby-Doo episodes and movies getting talked about, or do you like me? Are you annoyed by me? If so, not the video for you. We're gonna re we're gonna really test that boundary. And worse, I'm not scripted today. We're going off script. We're gonna be silly and goofy because I need to be silly and goofy. So I thought, uh, instead of movies or TV episodes or anything like that, we're gonna branch out with something a little bit different. We're gonna look at some nostalgic books of Scooby-Doo. Some of them are my actual childhood books. Some of them I had, but I had to rebuy because I, I lost them a long time ago. And some of them I bought brand new for this video. So we're gonna dive in and look at them. First, I'll go over which ones we're gonna be talking about and looking at. First, it's this, the Scooby-Doo The Essential Guide, which was a tie-in to Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. This is my childhood copy. And so it's very beaten up and I had to tape it up for this video. And that's okay. That's okay because it's still readable. It's a little a little worse for wear, but that's okay. We can still read it. This is what I always refer to for Scooby-Doo canon. When someone in my comment section is like, this is incorrect. You're wrong. I'm like, mm, mm, no, I don't think so. I have actual canon right here. I'm correct. Thank you. So we're going to be looking at that. Similar, this is something I bought new for the video. I know a lot of people have already done videos for this that I didn't watch because I don't want to be influenced, but this is the encyclopedia. It's very fun. I had to buy two copies. One of them was absolutely falling apart, but that'll be that'll be cute and fun to look at. Another thing I bought brand new is this Scooby-Doo look and find book. It's from 1999. So before Scooby-Doo really like became what it is now it was still under the cartoon network banner and so that'll be cute and fun to look at you probably won't be able to see it well enough to play along but it'll be cute to look at also from 1999 in the cartoon network banner is this extreme scooby-doo ultimate trivia book which i thought might be cute and fun and i guess it kind of is but it's also kind of like it's kind of silly but we'll look at it then this scooby-doo storybook collection which is something i had as a child but i don't know what happened to mine so i had to buy it used and uh it's very it's very warped and i had to tape a lot of it back together but that's okay it's okay we can still read it and this was basically a bunch of the little picture books that are gathered together so like you've got jungle jeopardy opera ogre alien invaders adaptation weird water park phantom cowboy which is ghost adaptation fantastic puppet factory which i also had with the temporary tattoos separate and the marsh monster so we'll look at that then here's another one of my actual childhood books it's the haunted carnival and for the longest time it was in really good condition I don't know how it got water damaged because I keep it safe away from water. I don't know how that happened, but it happens. But we'll look at it anyway because it's a really cute book. So, you know. And the last thing that I bought is the Scooby-Doo cookbook. It's from 2020 and I'm not going to make anything from it. I don't have the ingredients, but I thought it'd be like cute to look at, you know, for a video. So we'll look at that. Don't mind him. He's just here to look cute. I'm going to put him over here now. All right, what we're going to look at first is Scooby-Doo, The Essential Guide. This was published by DK. You probably see their stuff a lot. So uh, here we have the gang. If you don't know the gang, that's the gang. And I love this. It's Elias Kingston's graveyard. You've even got his name right here. And so here we see Shaggy introducing us to all of this stuff. We're not going to read that. We're not going to read that. We need the facts. So one of the crazy things I think is kind of fun is the screenshots are like horrid, horrid, horrid quality, and I don't know why. So here we're going to get all of our essential facts, the canon, the canon. Big ears can pick up spooky noises from miles away. Big paws are good for running away. So true. A doggy nose is great for sniffing out clues and food. So true. The groovy name tag means that Scooby never gets lost. Well, well, sometimes, but you know. Scooby's even scared of his own shadow. Well, why does the creepy thing keep following him everywhere? So true. Scooby's tail is so strong that he can easily beat Shaggy on a test or strength machine. Scooby's tail reflects his mood, usually terrified. So true, bestie. And they've got CG Scooby-Doo 2 up here. Master of Disguise, Tail Power, Sherlock Bones. But here's what we're looking at for these, the Scooby stats. Full name, of course, Scoobert. Address, the doghouse behind Shaggy's house. I think we're going with a pup named Scooby-Doo Cannon for that. Age, 7, in human years. A little confusing. Height, 12 paws high. Weight, 70 pounds. Likes Scooby Snacks and anything edible. Dislikes ghosts and his own shadow, as we established right here. All right, we're looking at the Shaggy page now. We've got Matthew Lillard a couple of times and some awful, awful, awful looking quality here. So we got Shaggy's gags, runaway success, baggy olive green t-shirt. Was it ever in fashion? Ouch. Wild mop of hair. Shaggy doesn't own a comb. Ouch. They're, why are they just dragging him? 
These baggy brown jeans can't disguise Shaggy's knees knocking together in fright. She was nearly worn out from running away. Shaggy speaks. Shaggy has his own uniquely groovy way of speaking. His favorite phrases are like, wow, here we go again, and of course, Scooby-Doo, where are you? His all-time favorite word is zoinks, which he says when he's just about to jump out of his skin in terror. Garbage disposal stomach. Ouch. Alright, Shaggy stats. Full name, Norville Rogers. So when Velma came out and people were like, who's Norville? That's Norville! You, where's your Scooby Cannon knowledge? That's Norville. Address 224 Maple Street, Coolsville. So we're still in the Coolsville Canon pre Mystery Incorporated because this was 2004, obviously. Age 17. That means he is the oldest member of the gang. Height 6 foot, so very tall. Weight 160 pounds. Likes food, lots of it, especially pizza and pies. Dislikes ghosts, monsters, and scary stuff in general. All right, we're gonna pull up on Fred here. Foreign leader, let's flip gang. There's Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Geller. And something surprising here is they've got this, Fred on Fred, which is a deleted scene from the original Scooby-Doo live action film in 2002. Fred's blonde hair is always neat, unlike Shaggy's. Shaggy's just always catching strays. Fred's blue shirt matches his eyes. Fred's ascot is almost as famous as he is. These sensible shoes are perfect for a serious sleuth like Fred. His neat blue slacks never seem to get dirty. All right, our Fred facts that are important here. Full name, Fred Jones, obviously. This is what I find surprising, but keeps being in all of these, so I assume it, this is canon. His address is 123 Tuna Lane, Coolsville. Age 16, height 5 foot 11, weight 185 pounds, likes inventing gadgets, solving mysteries, dislikes being tricked by a sneaky villain. All right, we're turning the page for Daphne. Miss Sarah Michelle Geller up here a few times. We do have a mention of danger prone Daphne, glamour under pressure, kung fu fighter, daredevil Daphne. The purple headband stops phantoms from pulling her hair. Is that what it's for? Okay. Daphne thinks this lime green scarf adds a touch of class. It does. Hands on hips, a typically feisty Daphne pose. Okay. Purple is Daphne's favorite color. Gosh, I couldn't have, I couldn't have told you that. These pink tights never ever get any holes in them. I feel like she has a lot of spares. These practical yet elegant shoes are perfect for a stylish ghost detective. Alright, our Daphne data. This is the important stuff. Full name, Daphne Blake. Address, 9000 Easy Street, Coolsville. Because I assume we're still going by the pup named Scooby-Doo canon where her family is rich. Age, 16. Height, 5 foot 7. Weight, 125 pounds. You shouldn't have put that on there for her. Don't, don't tell her business. Likes sleuthing and wearing out dad's credit cards. Yeah, we're in the she's very rich canon. Dislikes being captured and never getting any respect as a detective. All right, let's check out Velma over here. My glasses. This looks like a clue. Here's Miss Linda Cardellini a couple of times. These Clark Kent style glasses are easily lost. That's kind of interesting because we got a Clark Kent uh, and Velma reference in the crypto movie. The thick turtleneck sweater is Velma's fashion trademark. Velma's pleated skirt never gets creased. Cute red Mary Janes add a girly touch to Velma's outfit. All right, the important Velma stats that we need to look at here. Full name, Velma Dinkley. Address, 316 Circle Drive, Coolsville. Age, 16. Height, 4 foot 9. She is very, very tiny. She's a tiny little girl. Weight, 110. Again, do we need to be telling her business? Likes a good intellectual challenge. Science class. Dislikes missing a clue when it first appears. Period. All right, here... We've got our best friend stats. Even Shaggy's hair gets scared when he sees a ghost. You can be pretty sure that Scooby-Doo's next move will be to run away. So we've got some nice information here. These pals seem to be sharing a telepathic understanding and often do exactly the same thing at the same time. And then here, let's move this. We've got the detailing of their favorite snacks, like the Shaggy sandwich. And we've got the full detail here. That's kind of fun. Here you've got the moonbeams, vampire wings, and werewolf snacks from that episode. And so the details on the food that you have stacked here, Swiss cheese and chocolate syrup, marshmallows and anchovies, jam and eggs, ham and tomatoes, Scooby snacks, onion, lettuce, and tomatoes, sardines, cheese, and tomatoes, chocolate and chili peppers, peanut butter, liverwurst, bananas and ketchup, fish and chili peppers, corn on the cob and cornflakes, cookies, pickles and mustard, spinach and ice cream. Definitely a shaggy sandwich for sure. All right, here's the Dew Dynasty. This is the kind of thing I was looking at for, you know, my Scooby-Doo family tree video. And one thing I just want to say is I said Dooby-Doo here is an Elvis reference and people are like, no, he's a Prince reference, even though Prince wasn't really big enough to be referenced like that at the time. It says right here, he looks like Elvis Presley. He's an Elvis reference. Please stop commenting. No, he's not referencing Elvis. He's referencing Prince. No, he's an Elvis reference. 
I have the Scooby Cannon book. All right, so obviously we have Momsy and Dada Do. If you've seen my family tree video, we've, we've been over this. Young Scooby, Ruby Do, Dixie Do, Dooby Do, Grandpa Do. We're not talking about Great Grandpa Do. If you've seen that video, you know why. Scooby D, Scooby Dumb, he's the best boy. And then obviously Scrappy, who gets his own stats here. Full name Scrappy Do. Address Scooby's Place. Age five in dog years. Height three feet tall. Okay. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Because Velma's four foot nine. That doesn't sound right. Hmm. Weight 40 pounds. 40 pounds for a. 40 pounds. Somebody here hates Scrappy yet again. Likes his uncle Scooby and beating up ghosts. Dislikes not being in charge. He once tried to take over the world. That's not canon. Scooby Doo 2002 Scrappy is not canon. We're not. We're not going to talk about that. All right, here we have the interior of the mystery machine, which is really fun to look at. Scooby and Shaggy's well-stocked fridge, surveillance screen, satellite tracking dish, telescope viewer, microphone sometimes used by Scooby for karaoke, loudspeaker, Fred's ghost spotting binoculars, Velma's computer, telescope, a souvenir from an encounter with Redbeard, Fred's toolkit, night vision goggles, infrared glasses, Thelma's spare glasses, secret trap door, fire extinguishers, video camera, tow rope, Thelma's books on everything from alien abductions to zoology, Fred's clue diaries, groovy CDs, great for spur of the moment beach parties, a secret stash of Scooby snacks, special all-terrain wheels, psychic activity detector, Fred's own invention, it hasn't worked yet, radio transmitter for emergency SOS calls, cell phone with internet link and picture messaging, also great for ordering pizza, CB radio turned to the police frequency, global positioning satellite navigation system, Daphne's spy kit cunningly disguised as makeup, and secret recording device to tape the bad guy's confessions. I don't know how canon that is, but very cute. And here we're gonna, we're gonna see a lot about the villains over and over. So here you've got a Night to Remember, Phantom of the Haunted Isle, Ghoulish Ghost Diver, Minor 49er, and Weirdo Witch Doctor. Got these little classic clue references and quotes. Eerie Elias Kingston, Legend of the Ape Man, Puppet Master Rogue Robot. And we're just spoiling who did it over here for some of these. Then Goonie Ghosts. Gooning? Oh. Ghastly Ghost Clown. Which which is which? I just did a video about that. Spooky Space Coop. Redbeard's Revenge. Over here you've got the Spooky Spectres. So you've got Mr. Creeps and Mr. Crawls. Shiver with the Snow Ghost. The Ghost of Zen 2 The Creeper. Creepy Creatures. You've got Petrifying Prehistoric Prowler. The Headless Spectre. One of the scariest ones. One of the best and scariest episodes, right? Likewise, the Wax Phantom. Always gives me the heebie-jeebies since I was a kid. One of my favorite episodes. And the Freaky Monotiki over here. And then Famous Fiends. The Werewolf. He's got some stats. Origin Medieval Folk Tales. Famous for Blood Curdling Howl. Scare Rating. 8 out of 10. Analysis old furry features may be a classic monster, but he can only appear when there's a full moon. That's 353 days a year when he can't get you. Then Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde's stats origin first reported in 1886 in a novel by Robert Louis Stevenson. Famous for screwball scientific potions and chilling laugh. Scare rating 8 out of 10. Analysis sooner or later evil Mr. Hyde has to turn back into human Dr. Jekyll. But the doctor's mad scientist lab is pretty scary too. Watch out or he may give you a split personality. Mm, probably shouldn't say that anymore. <laughs> Mummy scare stats. Origin, ancient Egypt. Famous for creeping around tombs in bandages and putting curses on people. Scare rating, 9 out of 10. Analysis, mummies are just plain scary, but don't worry, they only come after people who invade their tombs. Gagla ghosts over here. Dracula scare stats. Origin, Transylvania. Famous for sucking blood, snoozing in a coffin, and turning into a bat. Scare rating, 10 out of 10. Analysis, spooks don't come much creepier than vampires. With just one bite, they can turn you into a fanged fiend. Frankenstein scare stats. Origin, first reported in 1818. It should be Frankenstein's monster, first of all. First reported in 1818 in Mary Shelley's novel. Famous for clumping around with bolts in his skull. Scare rating, 8 out of 10. Analysis, Frankenstein's monster was a total fake. At least they said it there. Wolfy scare stats, famous for howling and growling. Origin, medieval folk tales. Scare rating, 7 out of 10. Analysis, Wolfman is not very bright. Even Shaggy and Scooby gave this wannabe werewolf the slip. Sinister spots, this one's pretty cool. So you've got creepy castles terrifying theaters, ghostly graveyards, mysterious museums, and Dr. Jekyll's laboratory. I like the artwork here of that. Then here, with how iconic A Night of Fright is no delight, you've got the entire map of the house. Um, Unfortunately, also including the... I don't know if you can see it that easily, the Confederate flag and uniform down there. Um, I've got a video about Scooby-Doo and the R of Old Americana. I've talked about that. We're just gonna not look at that very much. So here you've got Spooky Old Tower. No haunted house would be complete without one. Fred's plan to trap the ghost in this laundry room went wrong as usual. So that's up there. I always kind of like forget that it's supposed to be like up here. This is actually very helpful to visualize how a lot of the episode goes. Daphne and Velma slept 
here, 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 here. Fred, Shaggy, and Scooby's bedroom. I forget which is which. <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby hid in this chandelier. Secret chute. Coal cellar. Wine cellar. This secret tunnel led to the Colonel's collection of Civil War memorabilia. Cousin Simple's room. The Colonel's will was read here. When Scooby played this organ, the room got narrower. Secret trap door. Catacombs with spooky coffins and fake corpses. Secret elevator. Cousin Slicker's room. And then you of course got the boat that came on here. That actually does help with visualizing where everything in that episode took place. That's kind of a nice little thing to have. And then you've got something similar here for Funland, where you've even got the little mouse here, the Tunnel of Love, Ticket Booth. Here's the giant magnet they used in the episode to stop Charlie. Then moving on, we've got this, which is directly obviously referencing Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. They're in their outfits from that right here. Groovy stiletto heeled boots, stylish sleeveless top, hip new hairstyle. That famous mop almost looks tidy. Same old sensible haircut, still no contact lenses. Oh, we're just coming for Velma. New orange sweater. Maybe Velma's skirt is a little shorter. Okay, same old goofy hound. And then you've got this, which I always thought was cool, which is hand-drawn versions of the monsters that appear in the movie, but they're like made to look more like the ones that are in the movie since they either either don't exist in the show or are very modified. And then lastly, you've got little summaries of each of the 25 episodes of the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You, which is interesting. I don't know like how useful this would be to you, but you know, very cool. And you've got all of the credits here. And that's Scooby-Doo, the essential guide, or at least skimming through it very heavily because I don't want to make this video like a bajillion years long. So a similar book, Scooby-Doo Encyclopedia, 200 characters and guest stars, every villain from the classic series Unmasked. And that includes the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show, Scooby-Doo show, new Scooby-Doo movies, all of those. And I think I'm actually going to use the copy that's kind of like falling apart to look at in the video just so I can show you a little bit better and not worry about messing up my nice copy. It's like it's already like taped together. It's taped together. It's falling apart. I didn't do it. It came that way this week. So here you've got the glossary, the contents, and then the little analysis of Scooby here. And then here you've got the introduction page going over 50 years of Scooby-Doo, introducing that if you don't know anything about Scooby-Doo, and then how to use this guide. So first up, we've got Scooby-Doo. So we're going over similar stats to the last guy. We'll see how it compares. Full name, of course, Scoobert. Age, 7 in human years, 12 paws, 70 pounds. Eyes are black, hair brown and black spots. So Again, yeah, it seems like the canon is true for both of these. Going over Terrific Tales, Signature Spots, Dog Tag, it's basically going over a lot of the stuff in the other one, so that makes me feel a lot better about referring to that as canon so much because it seems like it is sticking in the canon. Next up, you've got Shaggy, Signature Scruff, Mop Top, Zoinks, Norville Rogers, 17, 6 foot, 160 pounds, black eyes, brown hair, knocking knees again with him and the knocking knees. Daphne Blake, 5'7", 1,625 pounds, etc, etc. So yeah, it looks like the canon is sticking pretty true. Next up is Fred Jones Jr. And I guess we're going with Fred Jones Jr. for Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated because Fred Jones Sr. So take that as you will, because I don't really consider Mystery Incorporated canon outside of the Mystery Incorporated verse. And we're like, are we going to like set this book in Coolsville? Because I've looked through it already, obviously. I was taping it up quite heavily, but I, I didn't remember if I saw that or not. But uh, 5'11", 16, 185 pounds. Thelma, 4'9", 110 pounds. It seems like we're doing pretty good sticking with the same canon. Then here we've actually got the profile on the mystery machine. The souped up, tricked out, flower powered van is an unofficial Mystery Inc. member. Outfitted with a luggage rack and four wheel drive, the mystery machine transports its five passengers, including one great big Great Dane, to haunted locale around the world or the local beach resort. No matter where Scooby and the gang are headed, the Mystery Machine is their mobile headquarters. Jam-packed with the latest mystery-solving equipment, including communication devices, high-tech computers, Velma spare glasses, and a plethora of disguises. And then similar to the one in the last video, you've got a look inside the Mystery Machine that's very different, but very similar. Like here you've got a first aid kit, mystery solving equipment, gas gauge, ropes, bench seating, lantern, Fred's tools, mini fridge, spare gas can, jaw stretcher special. A lot of this stuff would be handy if they had it more often. They really don't. Roller skate, Scooby snacks, a jack, transporter radio, miscellaneous equipment, Daphne's mystery spy kit, Velma's books, she's always got her books, Velma's glasses, direction finder, Fred's ghost spotting binoculars, luggage ski rack, direction finding antenna, and obviously just a bunch of snacks on the table here. And here we're getting into the family tree. 
and you can start to see where I had to begin taping it up. So we've got Scrappy Doo, and thankfully we've got the rest of them actually having better stats than the old book. So Scrappy here, we're still going with 40 pounds. I don't think that's realistic, but we're going with his height is three paws. So we're at least being a little bit better there, but I don't know, 40 pounds is a little bit much. I have cats and dogs and that seems like a little much to me. Cause look, Scooby Dumb is 70 pounds and you're expecting me, Scrappy's like this big and you're telling me he weighs 40 pounds. I don't think so. If nothing else, he is actually on the cover, the spine cover here. So then you've got Scooby Dumb here. Fact, in the Headless Horseman of Halloween, Scooby Dumb was mistakenly called Scooby's brother. I went over that. So Scooby Dumb's actual stats here, we've got age, seven in human years, which makes sense. He's supposed to be lined up with Scooby. And then basically kind of the same stats, really. Then you've got Yabadoo and Dusty. Snack time when it comes to courage fueling treats, Yabadoo prefers chili snacks, which again, I think I probably went over that in the video. So full names, Yabadoo and Deputy Dusty, seven and 22 for Dusty, 12 paws high, five foot eight, 70 pounds, 130 pounds. Then Scooby D, pretty much likewise on all that, except she's 10 paws and 50 pounds. Fiddle D D, okay, Scarlett O'Hara. And then we're basically like doing a book version of my video, which I had this when I made that video. So here we've got Yankee Doodle Doo. I went, all, I went over all of these in that video. So Great Grandpa Doo, again, we're gonna like ignore Mr. Great Grandpa Doo. Grandpa do, Momsy do, and Dada do, Horton do, Spooky do, debatable on what he looks like. Very debatable. Spooky do's a debatable character. Then, of course, Scooby do, Yabba do, Ruby do, Scrappy do, Howdy do, and Skippy do. They only appear in a pup named Scooby do, so this is a new artist rendition of what they might look like older. Then, Hoopsie doo, Dooby dooby doo, Scooby dee, Scooby dum, and Dixie do. Scooby dum, best. Thank goodness Jellystone brought him back. Then, next up, we've got Dynamut and Blue Falcon, that's me, Dog Wonder, and Speed Buggy over here, the Speed Buggy team. I love both of these, but I'm pretty partial to Dynamite. I, I love me some Dynamite. I've got a whole video about his crossing over and being in TV and film media. Then here, we've got the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo canon, so Vincent Van Gool, age ageless, then Flim Flam, age 11, contradicts the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo sequel movie, 13th Ghost. Then, of course, we've got Weird and Bogle, who did not make the cut in that movie. Full names, Weird Bogle, ages hundreds of years old, heights impossible to measure, weights 65 pounds each. Do they have weights? They're ghosts. And here, Daphne reminds us of a fact of, obviously it lasted, you guessed it, 13 episodes as if it's obvious, but they didn't catch all the 13 ghosts, so is it really that obvious, Daphne? Then we turn the page here, we've got Batman and Robin, catch that villain! Batman and Robin team up to capture their arch enemies, the Joker and Penguin. So here we've got Bruce Wayne, age unknown. Well, you're doxing Bruce Wayne here, so you might as well dox his age. And then Robin, Dick Grayson, likewise, age unknown. I kind of wish they were more friends, but, you know, it probably be like a bajillion pages longer so next we've got scooby and shaggy's top 10 eats which i think is a fun idea so the world's biggest burrito cotton candy super shaggy sandwich which again we referenced before then to switch it up the shaggy super sandwich then the liverwurst sandwich a la mode which Sounds horrible, but it looks kind of good. It always looks good in that episode. I'm kind of like, I kind of want to wanna bite maybe Shaggy. Then Blockbuster Pizza, Shaw Stretcher Special, Hot Dogs, Shaggy Sandwich. We've got like three different variations of the Shaggy Sandwich. And obviously Scooby Snacks. Everybody's got to have a Scooby Snack. Now we're looking at our spooks and kooks. We got the aliens and bots. So future monster, moon monster. It's a very interesting episode. I've watched it a couple of times recently. It's, um... It's interesting, and these offer us things like clues about them, their aliases. I'm not going to talk too much about it, because I don't want to spoil it for you, and maybe I'll do a video on them. So, you know, spooky space kook, creepy glowing helmet, weird voice from sped up soundtrack, rubber boots, obviously. Continued, we've got the nuclear alien, the star creature, which is one of those Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo episodes, and Eeny Meeny Aliens. How many of you remember the Eeny Meeny Aliens? And same body snatcher, alien, plutonian. Evil Alien. I think a lot of these are Scooby Scrappy Doo episodes. Charlie the Funland Robot obviously is in this section. Out of control leg circuitry, metal body, eyes like two taillights on a hot rod, big dinosaur, helping hand. I think it would be a lot more helpful if they actually listed which episodes these were from. Then you've got Rawhide Red, Mars Robot, The Gunslinger. That's a classic. That's a new Scooby Doo movies episode, obviously. I think it's one of the Three Stooges, right? Then the Snow Beast, Giant Three-Toed Paws, Cockpit and Mechanical 
controls inside, razor sharp pearly whites, not bad for a snow beast of his age. Then you've got the scale here, very big ass snow beast. So now we're into beasts and monsters. So of course we've got that iconic ape man. That's a very fun episode. The demon shark, devil bear, moat monster, gator ghoul, which is an iconic episode. And as it mentions here, it's also a Scooby dumb episode, which makes it automatically very great. Then the shark men, which is different from the demon shark, giant vulture. Then we've got this freaky little ghost bull over here in cahoots. And he couldn't have done it without help from the medicine man. So we'll get to him. Then the Willowa and the Owlman. That's a Scooby-Doo show episode. Tail like a comet, face of an owl, human-like legs. Then we've got the monster mouse, giant bees, masked minx. This is a page of like, who are those kind of monsters compared to some of the more iconic ones. Mad sea lion, giant bat, Yadrick. I feel like a lot of people aren't going to remember some of these. Thankfully, we have a few good ones over here. We've got the ghost of Bigfoot. That's a pretty iconic design. And the pterodactyl ghost, which you might at least know from Scooby-Doo 2 when he was in the live action movie. A Neanderthal monster of Devil's Rock. Now, obviously, we've got the snow ghost over here. Fierce eyebrows, transparent plastic skis for real big footprints. And over here, we've got the Scarecrow, which is from another of my favorite new Scooby-Doo movies episodes. That's one with Jonathan Winters. The Caveman, obviously, that's a classic episode. Then the Werewolf again. The Jaguaro, that's a very iconic episode. And the Dragon Beast, another interesting episode. Then here, one of the best pages, one of the best pages. Yes, we have the Minotaur. Then we've got the Greek Minotaur from the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo series, which is my boyfriend. Get your hands off my man. Don't think about it. That's mine. I claimed him back in the Family Tree video, so don't look at him. That's mine. Then Werner Wolf, Centaur, and this Bigfoot. Then over here, we're on the Batman villains. So the Dryad, who was the Joker, and the Troll, which was the Penguin. Branch-like limbs, branch-like horns, roots for toes, rubber mask, creepy orange beard. I talked about that in the Batman video, obviously, but I always found these designs really creepy. Then Fire Beating Dragon, Bing Bong the Monster, Cyclops, Abominable Snowman, and Hound of the Baskerville. Again, we're in kind of territory. I feel like a lot of people aren't going to remember these. They're not as well circulated. Then the Kelp Monster, Octopus Monster, and finally another icon, the Tar Monster. He was in the live action movie. A lot of people got to know him. And then the Beast of the Bottomless Lake. I'm kind of surprised to see him get highlighted or her. Waterproof, razor sharp teeth, swim enhancing webs. Then over here, we've got the Alaska Monster, Rock Monster, Swamp Monster, Lava monster, seaweed monster, mud monster. Then the green globs, which I think are what sort of became the cotton candy monster in the live action movie, if uh, I'm correct. I could just be making that up. I could be delusional. Creepy heap from the deep, Aztec statue monster, and the cat creature. I think this is the episode a lot of people in the comments want me to cover for a scariest villain someday, I think. So we'll see. Then mantis, creature from the chem lab, gremlin, monster mutt, sea demons, and sea beast of the Aztecs. Again, we're sort of in that iffy territory for a lot of these. Then finally, some more icons. We've got the Hooded Man from another classic Batman episode. Then Killer Crunch. And of course, Minor 49er. Oversized, old-timey Minor hat. Super fake beard. Stilts in boots. All right, let's see what else we have in the Crooks and Criminals. We've got Blue Scarab. That's another Scooby Scrappy episode. I think that's the first one. Then Randar the Ape Man. Chinese Food Factory Burglar. Chameleon. Carnival Clown. And Phantom of the Soaps. Then we have the other Mr. Hyde. Not the one from the Dr. Jekyll. Mr. Hyde episode. This is from the new Scooby-Doo movies episode with Sandy Duncan. So pale skin, wicked top hat, and creeper cape. And we list the other aliases and costumes that he took up in that episode. Then Gardener, Catfish Burglar, and Vendetta. Mastermind, Codefinger, Phantom of the Sewers, Rocky Maximus, Waxmaster, Cat Lee. Again, we're in kind of iffy territory on recognizability here. Then we take a little break for Mystery Incorporated's top 10 road trips. Another one that's pretty cool. So you've got Ocean Land, Mr. Barnstorm's Big Top, Gold City Ranch, Pineapple Parlor, Rocky Point Beach, Swamp's End, Wolf End Lodge, Skull Island, Funland Amusement Park, and of course, the malt shop. Then back to kind of iffy territory. You've got the evil gin. We've got the demon. I remember this episode. Evil elf, snake demon, and Pat Wiley. Then finally, a few icons. 10,000 volt ghost, DIY ghost suit, 10,000 volts, not snowproof, shadow creature, pretty creepy design, cat man, and the puppet master. I've done a video on him. Then the magic mansion phantoms and Captain Moody's ghost. That's a Don Knotts episode. I love it. Then the phantom from the haunted isle, telescope, goofy laugh, and bed sheet light cover up. Then another big icon, the green ghosts, glowing eyes, rattling chains, green sheet like disguise, the ghost of Juan Carlos, ghost of Jeremiah Pratt, and ghost of Chef Maros. You've got 
Blobby, Spectre of the Sports Car is the Ghost of Christmas Never, which I've done a video on this character. Then the Vanilla, Chocolate, and Strawberry Technicolor Phantoms. And then the Hooded Ghost, which is a Harlem Globetrotters episode. Then Windmaker, Ghost of Mr. Hyde, Headless Spectre. And then of course the Black Knight, the original very first Scooby-Doo episode and villain. Then of course we've got the Ghost of Captain Cutler, Old Fashioned Scuba Suit, Glow in the Dark, Phosphor Ant Footprints. And then in fact over here, the Ghost of Captain Cutler is the only mystery Shaggy solves before Velma. Then the Haunted Horseman, which you might at least recognize from the new Scooby-Doo movies opening because he's featured in that every episode. Then the ghostly strongman. Then we've got the Viking, so Viking mannequin, Olaf the Terrible, and the Viking ghosts. And the ghost of King Katazuma, the headless horseman, which I sort of covered in the Family Tree video, the Black Knight, and the ghost of Zentuo again. Ruby encrusted forehead, golden mask, and traditional garb. Then you've got the old wax phantom, which again, one of the scariest villains for me from childhood, one of the most memorable. 100% wax, melty skin. Then we've got the ghost of Dr. Coffin. I've on a scariest villains video on him, the Phantom Racer, which was the previous video on the channel, and the Rambling Ghost, which I've seen people ask for and say is scarier than him, and agree, that's a very scary villain. And the Ghost of Elias Kingston, I've done a video on him. Captain Pescado, old Iron Face, very iconic episode, obviously he was done again in the Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. The Diabolical Disco Demon, which I did a video on recently, but they here call him the Disco Demon, it's just the Diabolical Disc Demon in the actual episode. The Ghostly Gondolier, which I've talked about in an episode, video, whatever, on the channel before, and the Night Ghoul, and the Ghost of the Red Baron, Davy Crockett Mannequin, and Ghost of Casey O'Reilly, and of course the Ghost Clown, which people really want me to talk about in a Scariest Villains video, Big Red Nose, Evil Grin, Floppy Shoes, Red Beard's Ghost, that's one of the funniest episodes of the show, Skull and Crossbones Hat, Namesake Red Beard, Super Sharp Sword, and here they mention the fact that an identical but just white version of him appears in one of the Harlem Globetrotters episodes that I mentioned in that video, and the Ghost of Captain Scavenger, Spirit of Fireball McFan, and the Ghost of Milo Booth, who I sort of talk about in the Family Tree video, and the Ghost of Sherlock, the Ghost of Finning and Macduff. I think that's the episode with the, yeah, the Slug Nest episode, so I've talked about him before. And the Ghost of McBaggy Rogers, and obviously Yankee Doodle Doo, so I've talked about him somewhat. Then the Red Coat Ghost, Ghost of Paul Revere, and the Minuteman Ghost, which I talked about obviously in the Globe Trotters video. Then Ebenezer Overview, Dr. Van Helsing, Ghost of Colonel Beauregard, which I think I sort of talked about decently in the Family Tree video. And then obviously the ghost of Nettie Crab and Spectre of Ebenezer Crab, which I talked about in the video on those. Then we get to go over the 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo. So you've got each of those listed here with some facts about them, including as Daphne points out here, Scooby and the gang only managed to track down 12 of the 13 escaped ghosts from the chest of demons. That means one is still out there. We're going to ignore the movie. Then here's 5 through 12 because they never caught 13. Then we've got skeletons and mummies. So you've got the cackling skeleton, the neon phantom of the roller disco. That's a pretty fun episode. Episode. The Mummy of Anka, which I sort of talked about in the Mummies video. Beady Red Eyes, Toilet Paper Wrap. Then Sky Skeleton, Maid Mummy, that's another one I sort of talked about but didn't talk about. Red Skull, and obviously the Skeleton Men, which became even more iconic after they used them in Scooby-Doo 2 live action. One Eye, Glowing Skeleton Suit, Hip Bone Connected to the thigh bone. Then next we have the Ghost of Merlin, obviously another iconic one because of the opening alone of the Squeedoo show, and then Mamba Wamba, which obviously also I did a video about. In Coots with Lila, we'll get to her. Then the Witch Doctor, traditional mask, unusual doctor clothes, fringed pants. You've got Anthos, Ghost of the Great Haldane, Arabian Magician, the Swamp Witch, which I did not talk about in my witches video, Madam Olga, Marvel Magician. Then the Witch Doctor, Skull Staff, traditional mask, bare feet. Then Medicine Man, Ghost in cahoots with this guy, Tower Wizard, and then obviously Ghost Witch of Old Salem, Arlene Wilcox's twin sister. I did a video about those three iconic witches. And speaking of, we've of course got Merlin here, but then we've got the Ghost of Witch McCoy and the Swamp Witch, which were part of that video I just did. Although they got the skin color here wrong because she's got blue skin, but maybe that's an effort to get rid of how kind of problematic that was. Uh, that's my thought. The Sink Nose, Appropriate Witch Hat, in cahoots obviously with the zombie. Then Gramps the Vamp, which was my very first video on YouTube.com ever because that's the scariest villain in Scooby-Doo for me. Lady Vampire of the Bay. I think I've seen one or two people talk about this one. Then Count Zarko, Vampire Foreman, and Sylvester. I have that episode on DVD. Then of course you've got Dracula over here, silver black hair, sharp canine teeth, creepy cape, 
pointy shoes and you've got miss slur as i have to refer to her as wolfman and frankenstein from all the same iconic episode then you've got the no face zombie i've done a video on him zombie lila obviously in the mama wamba episode zombie zombie obviously did a video and then you've got the creeper another icon hunched back big ol' eye, dragon knuckles. Then here, you've got a recipe to make your own Scooby snacks. And then you've just got the index. And that's the end of that book. So definitely a nice book to have as reverence. Maybe not like the most like comprehensive super thing, but it's like fun, especially for kids, I would say. And obviously Scooby fans, like this is a must have, I would probably say. All right, the next book is this Cartoon Network Extreme Scooby, the Ultimate Scooby-Doo Trivia Book. And it does list 200 facts, song lyrics. I don't know about too many 200 facts or song lyrics. They're really not song lyrics. I don't know what it's on about there. And here's the back. And being a book from 1999, it does look a little faded and old, and that's okay. It's only three years younger than me. So you've got the index here. How much do you know? Like, wow. Scooby-Doo is everywhere on Cartoon Network, on video, so VHS, posters, t-shirts, lunchboxes, even underwear. That's because everyone of every age loves Scooby, and I know that is true from my analytics. But just because everyone loves Scooby doesn't mean everyone's an expert, are you? Jinkies, did you know the first episode was about a Black Knight, or the most nickname for Shaggy and Scooby is the Gulping Gourmets? I don't know that she calls them that very often. And so we're gonna look and see just how interesting this actually is. I've actually already read it and tweeted about it, so. Rhythm and Do, Scooby is an expert dancer. He can also play the bugle, the ukulele, and the organ. Scooby's favorite part of the museum is where they keep the dinosaur bones. Yum. That is is true. Scooby sleeps in a doghouse in Shaggy's backyard. Again, I believe we're going with a pup named Scooby-Doo Cannon. Scooby's seven years old, so we're keeping with that cannon. That's 49 in dog years. His show has been on since 1969. How old does that make Scooby in dog years? And we're going by it's currently 1999 as of the release of this book, so it's a bit dated. All right, let's see what's on this page. Behind every good dog is a good dog's behind. Tales of Daring Do. Top five things Scooby can do with his tail. Open and close a door, pick a lock, twirl it like a lasso, catch fish, and swing a huge hammer. All right, doing the math, how many Scooby snacks does it take for Scooby to act as a decoy for a dog napper? One Scooby snack. Get in an old creaky elevator? Two Scooby snacks. Stand guard alone? Two Scooby snacks. Hunt for firewood on a dark spooky island? Three Scooby snacks. Sniff out a graveyard tomb? Four Scooby snacks. Bait at huge ape man? Four Scooby snacks and a bonus snack afterward. Climb through the window of a haunted wax museum? 24 Scooby snacks. Lure a wild robot into a trap? No amount is enough. Then here's one I think is very funny. Uh, what is Scooby-Doo's real name? Scooby-1 Kenobi, Scooby Califragilistic Expialidocious, Scoobert, or Scoop Doggy Dog? You should know it already by this point in the video because we said it a few times. It's Scoobert. You've got some Scooby-Doo more cool facts about you here than like a dude named Shaggy. So we're getting into some Shaggy specific trivia, including his real name again, Norville Rogers. His phone number is 1-800-LIKE-WOW. Always carries a copy of the Coward's Handbook. And here's a line from the handbook in case of bear attack run as fast as you can then here which villain scared the wits out of shaggy and scooby the ghost clown redbeard the pirate the seeing vampire or the green ghost if you said all of them t it's all of them it's a trick question you've got more groovy facts about shaggy and then finally we're moving on to the vibe on velma her last name is dinkley yeah we've we've covered that she is the shortest and youngest human member of mystery inc i think we've also covered that and the smartest no surprise when velma gets older she will become a scientist for nasa she sets her goals high sky high you sound like you know the future the future hasn't happened yet. Then hear about her needing her glasses. She can't drive a car straight without them. She wouldn't stop to talk with a Native American totem pole thinking it was Shaggy and Scooby. During a haunted house case, Velma walked right into the growling ghost thinking it was Shaggy with a bad cold. And one time Velma threw the wrong switch because she couldn't see. Instead of dropping a net on a monster, she turned out the lights. Then everybody was in the dark. Then this little note about Shaggy keeping an extra pair of her, which he has done before. Then here's one of my favorite pages, a guide to Velma speak. Velma, studies show the carnival rides relieve tension. Translation, let's go have fun on the roller coaster. Velma, oh, I'd love to probe the scientific intricacies of the feet of the ledger domain. Translation, I'd love to learn how to do magic tricks. Velma, actually thinking you've seen some place before that you've never been in is quite a common psychological phenomenon. Translation, you're experiencing deja vu. Velma, the non-material embodiment or essence or organism that's seen as a specter, wraith, or apparition has been scientifically proven to be sheer myth. Translation, there's no such thing as ghosts. And like I said on Twitter, we need to bring back Velma talking like a freak. We need Velma being an absolute freak more. All right, which of the following was not a disguised entrance to a villain's secret passageway, a Chinese dragon statue, a hang in there baby cat poster, a mummy's casket, an iron maiden, a harp case, or a wine case. If you said 
hanging in there baby poster with a cat uh you're right so we've got this warning velma says enter creepy carnivals at your own risk then creepy carnival trivia here then fred jones leader of mystery incorporated and again here it says fred lives at 123 tuna lane coolsville so it looks like that checks out as the canon at least by 1999 to 2004 then fred outsmarts villains with brilliant brainstorms heads up gang more traps designed by a fearless fred then some fred says lines and also what does fred pack in the back of the mystery machine so here here we've got a built-in radar tracking device, Daphne's photo dark room, which makes sense because we saw that in one of the witch episodes that I talked about recently. Ropes, saw, mallets, bench blanket, a jack, video monitors, a big supply of Scooby snacks, shaggy scooter system, ladder, lanterns, clamps, water jug, first aid kit, and computer. The mystery machine moolah, Daphne's multi-millionaire father bought the mystery machine for the gang. So yeah, it looks like we're going with the pup named Scooby-Doo kind of canon. Then what does Scooby say he'd buy if he had $500,000? A diamond studded muzzle for his cousin Scrappy-Doo, which we've already got a problem. That's his nephew. That's his nephew. We've covered this. We've covered this. The Leaning Tower of Pizza, 1 million hamburgers, stock in the company that makes Scooby snacks, or an ultra high-tech ghost alarm. If you said the answer is C, 1 million hamburgers, you're correct. And just in case you forgot, Scooby-Doo once inherited a fortune in worthless Confederate money. Oh, Scooby-Doo in the art of old Americana. And here we've got some scoopendous recipes. A Scooby Scoop, a cone with ice cream piled two feet high. A Scooby Dog, a hot dog topped with mustard, relish, and Worcestershire sauce. Shaggy Sandwich making song is included here. And Daphne's recipe for a shaggy snack. Mini pizza with anchovies, pepperoni, and pineapple topped with a chocolate dipped cherry. Then we've got Jeepers, it's Danger Prone Daphne. Is Daphne really danger prone? You decide. During one adventure while exploring a castle on her own, Daphne got locked in the dungeon. She also got trapped on the wrong side of the same castle's drawbridge. Talk about a danger prone damsel. Once Daphne slipped down a hill right into a zombie. She could find trouble just sitting still. Once she sat on a stone bench and it disappeared through a sliding panel in the door with Daphne still on it. Picture perfect, Daphne can even fall into a trap at a carnival photo booth. Then daring Daphne trivia. Daphne is a photographer. She always carries a camera for emergencies, as if she's ever not in an emergency. Which again, I covered recently in that witch episode, but that's like one of the only times I've ever seen her do it, if the only time, so that's interesting. Then for Daphne, there's nothing more serious than a fashion emergency. She's got the total ick here, look at her face. Daphne can't do one of the following activities, which is it? Ride a bicycle, pilot an airplane, develop photographs, write articles for detective magazines, or groove with the latest dances. If you said A, ride a bicycle, you're correct. That one's kind of one of the harder ones. That's surprising. Then woohoo, bring on the bad guys. You've got the recipe to ghost pirate stew. Bring seawater to a boil and add chains, cobwebs, soaps, and ashes to the stove. Serve hot to ghost pirates. The books in a high library that we've seen in the show. Dracula's Manual, Vipers, Bats, Ogres, 101 Ghosts and Ghouls, everything you ever wanted to know about witchcraft and were afraid to ask, spooky spells, and the history of makeup. And then things in the frightening fridge of a mad scientist lab, pickle vampire wings, werewolf snacks, and new improved fried moonbeams, which we saw before. Then the hypnotic spells of the ghost clown for the ghost clown episode. Then the old slur is who? The phantom shadow is what? And which witch is which? And you've actually got a Witch McCoy reference here, which is pretty nice and surprising. Followed by yet another here. You've got the Witch Doctor, Frankenstein's monster, accurately labeled now, the Funland Robot, and Count Dracula. And over here, the Creeper. And here you got some quotes from some of the villains. And then it's all relative. So here we have the members of Mystery Incorporated have a lot of aunts, uncles, and cousins. So Velma has an uncle who is an electronic genius. Jackie's uncle Beauregard was a plantation owner and a Civil War general. We've very well covered that in the Boo Brothers video with that trilogy and the old Americana. John Maxwell, Daphne's uncle, is a famous movie director. Fred's uncle is a colonel in the Air Force and a big shot at the National Space Agency. Thelma's aunt Thelma is a head at the Marine Institute. Yeah, another of Thelma's relatives, Uncle Dave Bolton, is a U.S. border guard at the Canadian border, and Daphne has an uncle, Matt. He's a cattle rancher. And here we have some tail-wagging trivia about Yabadoo. When the Mystery Incorporated gang wants to entertain their relatives, they take them to the local malt shop. Which one of the following treats is not on the menu? Mango shakes, jumbo banana splits, Orange floats, eggplant surprise sherbet, chocolate sundaes with pickles on top. If you said the eggplant surprise, you are correct. Then we've got the gangs all here. You've got some little trivia about the gang all together here. Then again, nobody's perfect. So you've got some of the things that the gang are maybe not so good at, which is kind of cute. Two best buddies, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. So some trivia about the two of them together as best friends. When is Scooby not afraid? When he spots a spider, when he surprises a mummy, when he's high up in the air, when he's alone on guard, when his friends are in trouble. If you answered E, when his friends are in trouble, 
you win in all Scooby all the time the episode guide. So here you've got basically just a guide and summaries again to all of the classic episodes which kind of weirdly and surprisingly also lists the new Scooby-Doo movies but it does not list the Scooby-Doo show which you know that's an interesting thing which I do consider the, those episodes like some of my favorites but it's interesting to do those and not the Scooby-Doo show because it does reference the Scooby-Doo show episodes clearly like Witch McCoy and stuff like that and that's just some of the things that you can find in this book it's definitely kind of like silly goofy not really worth spending too much money on but like I paid like three dollars for it so I guess it was like cute for three dollars then why don't we have some fun looking at the Scooby-Doo cookbook which is the one that I got the most recently alongside the other encyclopedia kid-friendly recipes for the whole gang again I'm not gonna make anything from these I don't have the ingredients but cute to look at right so here's the opening art here and I really like this art here I think that's pretty cute art don't you think so here you've got the contents we're gonna go through each of them just a little bit so here you've got some basic Basic kitchen rules. Always use clean hands, tools, and surfaces. Make sure you wash your hands and keep your tools and surfaces clean. They really want you to make sure everything's clean. So, you know. So first up, we've got the Swamp Brownie Cocoa. And I think I would probably try this one. I don't know. Maybe. Would you try the Swamp Brownie Cocoa? I feel like that one could be, like, fine. That one's not one of the worst. Because I've looked through this already. Some of them, I do know anything to do with. So... That one's fine. Donut Demon. This one's kind of lazy. Basically, they're just saying, go buy donuts and then decorate them yourself. Like, we're not going to be making donuts from scratch with this book, if that's what you're looking for. Mystery Machine Road Trip to Go Cup. Some of these, I'm kind of like, are these really Scooby-Doo recipes? Because some of them are kind of lazy. Don't hate me for that. Whoever wrote this book, I'm sorry. I'm just like, very judgy about is this scooby-doo this one i would eat i would eat the hell out of this you basically got some bugles you got goldfish you got pretzels and then you like melt something on it in the oven i don't know but i would just eat the heck out of this for sure then saturday morning cartoon cakes which are like pancakes bananas a bunch of different other fruits i feel like i wouldn't eat this one i'm kind of getting a little bit sick looking at it but you know and then you've got an alternative version you could have like ice cream raspberries and stuff in there then marshmallow man cereal bars i would probably eat that I don't know if I would make it. I might just like buy cereal bars. Then Toasty Ghosties. These are like cheese made out of cheese of some kind. This is one of the ones I would want to try the most. I don't know. I get the feeling that this one tastes really nice. Then you have Mystery Map Pizza. This is where they're kind of losing me because pineapples on pizza. It's a debate. Pickles on pizza? Pickles on pizza? What are you doing? And the bacon. I never like that kind of bacon. I feel like this is too far. This is too far. Trash trash and the gang's mac and cheese volcano i would probably try this one this one looks like it would be probably interesting right like anything mac and cheese tends to be pretty safe you can't like mess that up horribly then sd delivery dogs it's basically just like you put a bunch of cheese and little pepperoni on a regular hot dog it's not really that special <laughs> this is probably like the easiest one that you could really kind of do then the world's biggest green burrito and this one is so long and complicated that you have to have four pages to it because you have to make the guacamole yourself to like continue here to further document how you're going to do that. And I feel like I would eat this one. There doesn't seem to be anything like outrageous about this. So we've got the Villain Mask Stacker Surprise. Another one I feel like I would probably eat this one. It seems like it's not that offensive compared to how bad some of these could be. Then this one is Coolsville Crisp Chips. This is another one I feel like they're kind of being a little bit lazy with this because basically they're just asking you to buy chips that have already been made and then season them. And it's like, well, you could also like make your own chips. Like I've personally made chips before out of just potatoes. It's not that hard. I guess like this is supposed to be for like really little, really little kids. So I guess just buy a bag of chips and I don't know, just season them yourself. At least we're going with Coolsville here because this is a 2020 book and we're still saying Coolsville. So points for that because this one, this is still one I would eat. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't eat this one, you know. Then Shaggy and Scooby's Draw Stretcher Special. This is one um, I'm going to have to say hell hell no to um this is making me sick looking at it i'm gonna go get sick to my stomach looking at this i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sure they would love it though then the shaggy shake uh i would probably try this one this is one i might be a little bit more hesitant to try but sure then zoinks it's like a huge sandwich now this this is a scooby-doo recipe this is what i'm looking for when i want a scooby-doo cookbook is like a fucking nutso sandwich like this that's just like massive this is what i'm looking for i would not try this but i would want to look at it then this is my favorite this is my absolute favorite the lost my glasses lemonade that's so fucking silly that's so silly goofy and i would definitely try this one just because of the name alone then scoopy dooby-doo which is like 
hot fudge sundae basically then jinkies juice pops again i feel like we're kind of like really stretching things to fit things that kids can make into a scooby-doo cookbook here's one i want to try creepy spooky terrorland churros absolutely absolutely but you're basically just here's how to make churros so you know then here the gang's all here cookies basically just make cookies and then decorate them in the colors of the gang so another like kind of like very simple recipe but you do have like this page that dedicates this information to here's what you need to do to get the exact colors for it if you want to do that i guess then the mystery ink misty drink again i i would probably try this one then considering like 90 percent of what i eat is popcorn we've got shaggy's chocolatey carnival corn i would probably try this one i would prefer it without the chocolate i would i would just want to eat the popcorn but you know you've got possum punch which i guess i would try this one i might be a little bit more hesitant toward also i don't know then wort pudding parfaits which is definitely interesting it's a little too chocolatey for me though like when they get a little too chocolatey a little too sugary sweet i don't know i kind of i kind of snap out of it then creepy spooky Terrorland cotton candy cupcakes these look cool and it does actually involve real cotton candy as a, an ingredient so i guess well i know i don't think i would try this one it's a little too sugary sweet it's kind of making me sick thinking about it actually and then the last one is the cake monster caper these little cake pops kind of things with eyeballs which i guess i would try this one that's kind of cute right and then it has an advertisement for this which we already looked at and then a bunch of joke books which i'm not getting i'm not getting joke books that's fine but like uh i was hoping this would be a, li a little bit more interesting but it was like definitely cute i only paid five dollars for this which is cheaper than it's technically meant to be sold for it's like ten dollars so i only paid half price for it maybe someday i'll make something from it but basically i just wanted to look at it and be silly Next, we're going to look at Scooby-Doo, The Haunted Carnival. This is one of my childhood books, and I really grew up loving this book because I just love the art. And this is another one that was published in 1999. You've got the gang here looking at the ghost. So here you've got this art here. I really love the art. It's just so charming, the art in this one. It really captures the vibe. One summer day, Scooby, Shaggy, Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Scrappy-Doo decided to take a break from detective work and go to a carnival. Like, let's investigate what kind of food they have, Shaggy suggested. Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy followed their noses to the hot dog stand, and the others went to find fun games to play here we have this sketchy looking guy here that's controlling this and i love these faces here and i'm not gonna read the whole book i'm sorry like if you want to read it buy it i don't want to get sued i'm probably already going to be in danger for showing too much of that cookbook then here we have the gang playing here and i love this art also fred getting just absolutely splashed and i love this art also the phantom of the story the masked figure pops up the phantom of the carnival so he says, I'm the fan of the carnival. I warn you, disaster will strike. Run before it's too late. And then these two, they're very sad. They're Mr. and Mrs. Gullet. This phantom is scaring away our customers. I love how inquisitive Daphne looks here. And here we have the phantom showing up in the Hall of Mirrors and Scrappy being a big old doofus running right into it. That's very Scrappy. That's very in character. And so the phantom ends up tripping and like they catch him. And it turns out it's the man from the dark game. I guess I'm spoiling things anyway. I'm sorry. And the guy running the roller coaster, it's basically all of them and i love this art this like absolutely ridiculous pose like what is going on here and then we have another issue here where they're getting the canon wrong where they're calling scrappy his cousin that's his nephew that is his nephew he has never called his cousin anyway i really love this book like you should like definitely have a copy of the haunted carnival it's a very fun book especially if you love scrappy then here's the scooby-doo storybook collection again very faded cover you can see the difference in color here from a sticker that was on it i had this as a child so let's look at it this is probably the most you'll ever get to see me talk about scooby-doo and the alien invaders or scooby-doo and the witch's ghost because i'm never going to talk about those as zombie island i'm never going to do it i'm sorry it's not happening i'm kind of surprised this was only 10.99 when it came out this is big this is like multiple individual books in here that's kind of crazy okay so here you have big old scooby it's got some stains i got buy you i'm sorry and then big old scooby again here so you've got books here that were published from like 1999 to 2002 all gathered here and then the index of where you can find them and so first is jungle jeopardy and i really love the art in a lot of these also so you've got the gang is going on this sort of safari here in the jungle with this guy professor peabody he's an expert in archaeology as we find out and then this guy this monster shows up and he's scaring them obviously over here but it turns out when they get back nobody believes them 
So they go exploring and get into a bunch of shenanigans. The boys, of course, obviously eat a bunch because they're Shaggy and Scooby. And then they get into like a bunch of hijinks, including getting chased by bats. Velma looking very funky over here. Probably can't see it and that's okay. Take my word for it. They get into more shenanigans here while they're looking, including getting chased by a bunch of logs. That's unfortunate for them. And then they even go over the waterfall on one of those logs. It's kind of a, a lot's happening. And then they find a bunch more of these guys while the boys are getting chased by snakes and just running into a bunch of shit and eventually they get in here enough that they find like a whole like inside place they probably should not be because it turns out this is where these guys are like doing all their stuff and they've tied up the gang the rest of the gang here and so they all get free but then they get trapped again and so as they're sinking through the salt they get a little bit of luck and they find more of the behind the scenes stuff of the villains here they go through this mine they're getting chased a bunch happens in this story actually it's kind of like crazy but they get in far enough that they find what the villains are looking for is obviously all of this treasure so we got some scooby snacks to get these two to be the bait and finally they agree and they lure the cat guys over here they use those logs that comes back they learned they used and then of course they finally capture them and reveal who they are and they live happily ever after the end then we've got scooby-doo and the opera ogre and we're gonna like we're gonna look at these costumes so we've got like this opera ogre it's kind of like the phantom of the opera and the hunchback of notre dame and here's what we're looking at here because look at the outfits of the gang especially Daphne and just how much she's fucking serving like geez so basically the hunchback Quasimodo is over here and he's haunting the opera house for some reason and he's like he's set a fire and the gang's like what is going on here so they decide to stay back and investigate what's going on while these two just get into a bunch of shit because obviously that's what they do but they end up running into a mummy very scary while these three are over here actually trying to figure things out and they've got old quasimodo over here and by that point they realize it's too late and he's even got like all these viking minions where he ends up reciting fire burn and cauldron bubble bring forth my viking warriors on the double and so they they are cornered by all of those while these two are having to fight this kind of freaked out looking mummy that was not expecting to be assaulted and then they just kind of like throw him down here and then we got some drag some cross-dressing and scooby looking pretty nice in this costume he looks very frightful i would stay away from him in that costume then we start to realize these are puppets so we don't really need to be scared of all of that and so they start to look over here and realize there's a bunch of clues while the boys meanwhile are distracting old quasimodo over here the ogre and they end up almost falling to their death and falling into the mummy it's starting to feel like that mummy is not working on the side of the ogre here thankfully these three show up in time to distract while these guys get away over here and that poor mummy is just like getting the shit rocked out of him here so they determine the mummies kind of knocked the hell out and so we're just gonna move on and these two of course snacking while these guys are all just really rocking these outfits like the dress on Velma just being like a little bit longer just makes a big difference. It really presents her differently. And so they have them pretend to be Romeo and Juliet in a play as bait for the ogre for old Quasimodo and get him to chase them. And they have this fake wall here for him to run into their rope and they unmask him and the mummy and as you might have started to suspect by now he was not working with old quasi he is the actor that disappeared that was just trying to like get some help so they were basically assaulting him for no good reason and the boys get to join the rest of the play then here here's the most i'm ever going to talk about scooby-doo and the alien invaders so i guess let's enjoy it so here we got them driving through the desert we've got the alien ship trying to abduct them then we've got the jackalope of course and then the boys just immediately get chased by the aliens we're just really cutting down on this to get through it i love the outfits of them from the movie you've got daphne and fred and velma asking this old guy here lester about what he knows and getting all of that information because he's a conspiracy theorist they of course the boys do actually get abducted and this is just making me really want to watch scooby doing alien invaders i hope it gets a blu-ray release soon like zombie island i'm pretty sure i'm very very sure it will i just hope it's like soon and then they get chased out of course they meet crystal and of course amber everybody loves crystal and amber so they're falling in love over here while they meet these three that are actually running the satellites while these guards are looking very suspicious toward amber and crystal here lester helping out over here i don't want to say too much about alien invaders i'm sorry <laughs> and so they start investigating here the aliens are like what the hell are you doing in here and then they get chased out they get caught fred's looking very interesting here turns out the aliens were the other three that were behind the satellite dishes they capture them they're looking very goofy but then it turns out crystal and amber are actually aliens and that helps save everybody everybody's taken care of they completely knock out everybody else everybody's cut and dealt with 
and the boys have to say goodbye to Amber and Crystal. Tearful goodbye. Not nearly as emotional. It's not nearly as emotional as it is in the movie. And then they get arrested. Lester is like, bye, bitches. And the gang say goodbye. Really does just make me want to go watch Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders after that, you know? So we've got Scooby-Doo and the weird water park. And I love this art of them just dead over here, especially Velma, tongue hanging out. So basically, it's very, very hot and they need a place to chill. So they decide, let's maybe stop at some point because they're like ice cold soda sold here. They stop. It's just oof. So they decide, let's go to that monsoon island water park. Closed for good, go away, but they can't read. They can't read. You've got Mega Jammer, the Water Rocket, the Duncan Spin. And of course, the boys run into this freaky fish man. They try to escape this way. These three looking very silly goofy running on this water ride that they should probably not be standing on. But I guess it works out for the best because they get to have a fun little trip down here and get all splashy wet in the hot sun. So, you know, it works out. And I love the art here, silly goofy, where they find another creature while the boys are getting while the boys are getting chased by this octopus water thing. Okay, well, I kind of lost where we were because there were a bunch of boom, boom, booms. And it turns out uh, my sketchy neighbor started a fire trying to burn a bunch of probably illegal trash in his yard. And the cops came and the fire truck came to put the fire out. And I think he ran away because they were looking for him. So um, I don't live in a very good part of America. I'm sorry. Uh, Anyway, a bunch of stuff is happening. I don't know anymore. I kind of lost the plot because of what just happened. I'm sorry. All right, they go down the waterfall and they're like, yay, but this thing's over here. And then you You've got these creatures looking over here. They kind of look funky, don't you think? I love these poses from all three of them here. But this thing, this octopus thing is still chasing them. I don't know how they're going to explain that. That's kind of unusual for Scooby-Doo. And then that's trying to get in on them. But they get the hose here. Look at Fred's face here, though. That's kind of silly face. This is where I had to tape a page because it was ripped. Some child that owned this before me ripped it. And it does, sure enough, lure some of those creatures over. But then the boys go out of control with the hose. And uh, it's not very good for them. But thankfully, it ends up catching the sea creature monster things anyway but then this chases them and it turns out oh it's a projection and that's how they explained it that does make sense i guess and so they get to enjoy the rest of the water park including this fred fan service then we have scooby-doo and the phantom cowboy not to be confused with scooby-doo shaggy's showdown we've got some fantastic costumes here yet again especially daphne so you've got just everybody's basically cosplaying old cowboys and you've got this ghost is over here they're just trying to have like a good old time in this like replica of the old west i kind of like how thick the art is here although it's kind of funky but then it turns out that old spook, that old spook they were warned about is now chasing them. So that's not so good. The girls, they gotta get in some action here to get out while this guy, this phantom is rustling the boys. I'm sorry, my energy is kind of out after that. That was kind of tiring. Uh, having a fire like across the street, like in the neighbor's yard. Fred's like, these horses are kind of spooky spooky but we've got some scooby snacks for scooby and daphne's over here serving anyway they're looking for shaggy because he got got and so scooby's looking for clues to go find him they find a bunch of spooky yuki dummies and they finally find shaggy hidden in the flower and he thinks he's a ghost obviously but he's not he's just covered in the flower but that spook over here it's pretty nicely designed spook honestly he's still chasing them and so they gotta hide over here in the authentic native american pueblo very interesting but at least they say authentic native american American Pueblo, not something else. <laughs> All right, so again, serving. They're looking around for clues here because something's just not adding up, but Spook shows up and chases them again. So the boys dress up because, of course, the boys have got to dress up, and Spook's like, what the heck? What the heck is this? But he gets his nerves back. He chases them, and then he gets them over here. They're on a cliff. That's dangerous. But thankfully, that's also where the trap was, and they catch him, and he goes to prison and they get to enjoy the grand reopening of Phantom Gulch happily ever after. And now here we have Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost again. This is the most I'm ever going to talk about Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, so uh, enjoy it. We're going to enjoy it together. So here we have Ben Ravencroft introduced. We're just skipping through that whole opening scene. And he's already getting offended on the next page of the I'm the Ghost of Oak Haven and Lived shirts. And we see them looking through the old Americana, little old Americana town having a good time. And then this scene, since I'm never going to talk about this movie, can we talk about how this scene in the movie just all always made me so hungry like every time I watch a scene I'm like I have to go eat like 5,000 tons of food that looks so 
damn good. And so they look around Ben Ravencroft's mansion and they learn about how his relative Sarah Ravencroft was a Wiccan. And then they're just horrified at how much Shaggy and Scooby are eating, which again just made me so hungry. Made me so hungry. And then we meet the Hex Girls. The Hex Girls finally. And then the old witch that turns out to actually not be a witch. It's just a fake. But we'll get to that. And Shaggy gets got here. But they get to enjoy the Hex Girls playing some music here because it turns out they're a really cool band. And I really wish we could have gotten the Haunted High Rise, the new movie that got cancelled and would have had new songs that were already fully recorded. It makes me so sad. Ben and Velma team up over here and Shaggy and Scooby are following the mayor and he seems like pretty sketchy but then they run into that old witch again. They finally reunite, catch everybody up, they hang out with the Hex Girls because the Hex Girls are awesome but then they get scared by the witch's ghost again which turns out to be Thorne's daddy and then it turns out the entire town was in on the whole scam because it brings them money. And Scooby's doing his little first shame that he does but then it turns out Ben Ravencroft is evil and he wanted this book all along and he brings back the real Sarah Ravencroft and then a bunch of this stuff I love this I love this shot put that in the old Americana thumbnail but then it turns out Sarah Ravencroft is evil and she's not even on Ben Ravencroft's side and she drags him into the book with her the end and I really do love Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost I'm really in the mood to watch that one I need that blu-ray I need that Blu-ray Warner Archive. Get on it very quickly. Then Scooby-Doo and the Fantastic Puppet Factory. This is one of the ones I actually had this as an individual book also. And it came with temporary tattoos. And I remember I was a very young child. It was like elementary school. I put all the temporary tattoos on my body. Uh, and then I went on a trip that I didn't know I was going on. And I just completely forgot they were there. And then I had to go swimming. I was like, oh shit, I'm covered in temporary tattoos. My entire arms and chest and everything. And so I had to like spend half an hour just in the bathroom trying to remove them. So nobody would ask why I was covered in Scooby-Doo temporary tattoos while also having people probably wonder why are you spending half an hour in the bathroom so that's a fun story related to this it's not really related to this but it's a fun me anecdote i guess so they're here they're getting their snacks per usual but this lady she needs some help her cat is missing so they talk to these guards here see if they've seen anything and decide why don't we go check in here things are leading to over here which turns out to be an old puppet factory you've got punch and judy show all these just creepy creepy looking puppets and i remember this being a spook yuki to me when i was a child this book spooked me and they just get up and run after him like that's scary that's some anime shit that's some dead silent shit and then you have more of the puppets being made over here and you got the cat on the puppet that's controlling everything and then worse the gang gets caught and then turned into puppets and that's so scary that was so scary to me as a child this book scared me so the boys are getting chased here but then they're just laughing because they're tangled up and they're just puppets they're harmless but then shadow of a bigger puppet and it's this chinese dragon and the gang thankfully get freed thanks to daphne throwing her shoe so good on daphne here and they find all of these puppets are full of money so Obviously, we found out a little bit of what's going on here. And I have to criticize some of the book here because this is black on dark colors. I literally cannot read this without like looking really closely. Then they see the security guards and then they pull what they did in that other episode, Backstage Rage, where the guards were puppets all along, which is kind of a scary twist here, too. I love Velma just being like, oh! <gasps> E gods. And then that dragon is coming after them. They all get in this. They're running, they're running, running, running. Bella looks at these pictures over here while the boys are trying to get snacks when the dragon comes back again. But it is just a puppet and it stops. So they're like, hmm. And so they take some of this traditional Chinese garb and the fireworks. And um, very questionable, but it's Scooby-Doo. They're going to do it. They dress up in traditional Chinese garb. They're not doing as bad as they did in some episodes. Some episodes, I'm like, <gasps> when I watch them, now so it could be worse the fireworks go off the puppeteers are caught the guards that are puppets are brought out the cat is safe the money is revealed from the puppets and the old woman gets her cat back so it's a happy ending and then our last story is scooby-doo and the marsh monster which kind of just looks like it's a ripoff of the tar monster if i'm being honest so they're going to the rapid river rafting company obviously they're wanting to raft but these guys are talking about how there's this marsh monster that they ran into so maybe be careful and it seems like these guys they're rich they're looking to buy something over here they're sketchy the gang are like you know we're not gonna let this interrupt anything so they go ahead there's this sign over here it says danger rapids and they go down anyway because they didn't see that sign it's broken and they end up in horrible horrible danger and then we see the marsh monster is over here lurking and they see the shadow and they're like what the heck is that that's scary but it turns out to be this guy and he seems like he's a friend and he helps them out and he sends them back on their way but then that marsh monster that looks like it's just the tar monster let's be real it's chasing shaggy and scooby they end up just throwing food on it which i'm kind of surprised they would do that that shaggy and scooby 
we would like die instead of doing that and they end up being very upset about it over here but it's like you know would they have done that in the first place while we're here can we just appreciate like Daphne still rocking like the purple shorts and the tights and like it's basically the same from here and she's still got the scarf on anyway the not tar monster chases them up a tree but the trap works and they catch it and it turns out to be one of those rich guys obviously and they get to go on a rafting adventure without a not tar monster after them and live happily ever after and so that's the scooby-doo storybook collection just the books that were in that and i thought that might just be like a nice little nostalgic thing to skip through if you're like me and you grew up with this or looked at this or anything you know you probably have to be like around my age though so obviously this compilation was 2002 so you'd like really have to be around my age to probably care about or remember this anyway our last book that we're going to be looking at here is the look and find scooby-doo book which i did not grow up with i bought this brand new for this video i only looked at a little bit of it and probably not going to be able to appreciate it as much on camera but you know it'll be fine here's the inside you've got a bunch of scoobies and old dracula over here and again 1999 so here you've got this it's the sort of carnival so you've got robbie the robot i love this daphne here in the mirror so it's a bunch of robot themed stuff so you've got even scooby-doo is a robot and then he's over here tunnel of love mushy stuff ahead you've got a wax museum over here ferris wheels day off instead of ferris bueller's day off hot dogs ball toss fortune telling velma's over here giving away money at the fortune telling booth i don't know what that's about but uh even robots can fall in love you've got robot repairs disoriented express on the next one you've got like a bunch of mummies and stuff mystery machine just mummied you got scooby down here velma mummies for dummies floating pharaoh rags to riches mummy dearest kiss the cook <laughs> that's cute daphne down here using her magnifying glass fred's over here there's shaggy homo scubus we got the food court over here rest in peas ballet parking so one of the things we're looking for is mummy scooby that's pretty easy chef mummy mia let me see if i can find chef mummy mia all right i'm kind of pissed i had to stop again so i'm probably just gonna wrap this up because i'm tired of having to reset everything but i am gonna find chef mummy mia okay i did find chef mummy mia she's up in the food court that makes sense all right so we're gonna move on <laughs> we're gonna move on here's a bunch of pirates oh you can't see it that way can you here's a bunch of pirates so you got red beard over here and there's shaggy sausage is getting cut up there's velma she's uh walking the plank she's walking the plank that's that's funny okay she's walking the plank like a dog daphne's getting her picture taken over here spare tires hooks line and sinkers corn buccaneer tastes like chicken snack shop lost marbles found marbles movers and shakers there's a bunch of very cute stuff here's fred getting his portrait painted here's old pirate scooby that's one of the things we're supposed to find there's a lot of really cute funny stuff this way that way anchors away okay the next page it's like a ski resort so snow globe gift shop i got velma reading a book here kind of almost winnie the pooh bear cliff's cliff ice sculpture contest there's daphne there's that snow ghost who's one of the things we're supposed to look for there's scooby he's frozen here's shaggy up here there's old santa claus santa slept here there's actual shaggy there's fred i can't find fred there he is the whole time okay we're gonna move on here's a big year of the rabbit celebration i guess fred's over here fishing you got scooby over here Shaggy's of course eating over here. You got some spooky looking phantoms over here. The scare pair. Daphne's over here. Now the one I can't find is Velma. Oh, there she is. Okay. All right. Well, we have to keep moving. We gotta keep moving. So here we're on this island and I'm kind of confused by all the things that are here. So like this person burned to death. That's kind of like scary. You've got like a witch over here and a mermaid and skeletons dancing and partying. you got like witch doctor kind of stuff over here. All right. So Fred is playing the guitar here. Scooby's over here. Scooby diving. Love this low key Amelia Earhart shout out. Is that in poor taste? I mean, it says Bermuda Triangle right there. Here's Daphne. Shaggy he's over here i think we're just looking for velma now and now i can't find Velma. oh there she is of course she's reading of course there she is all right the next one is in an old spooky castle so this one's kind of fun except it's kind of that's a little bit that's a little bit uh i might not have drawn those ghosts that way so no bridge playing pool hall ghoul hall got a pirate ghost and skeleton set over here here's dracula blood donors are welcome another witch over here and a bunch of who knows what these are no pets allowed scooby's over here crossing this out although they didn't 
color in his nose. I do kind of love some of these. And then you've got like Rapunzel and a prince over here for some reason. Ghost Nine Goblins for Botanical Gardens, Dead Center, Buried Hatchets, Ground Floor Opportunity, Really Deep Dish Pizza. Fred's over here reading a book. Oh, here's Daphne about to be sawed in half. And here's Velma and Shaggy together. And of course, Shaggy's got a sandwich over here. Here's the footprints, one of the things we're supposed to look out for. The Phantom of the Castle, that sounds fun. Let's, there he is up there. See, this is pretty easy to do when you're trying. We got this woodland setting here. Let's take a look at this. Poison Ivy Relief. Cone, sweet cone. Love this little nurse bear. Ooh, these dancing skeletons. Wash and Werewolf. Died, 1980, D-Y-E-D. -E bear Hugs 50 Cents. Here's that old werewolf, the classic werewolf. Here's Fred chopping some wood. This guy's just sleeping on the wood. Wolf Crossing. Here's Scooby Cooking. Daphne is just chilling down here. Snake Lake. Uh, I wouldn't want to be too close to that. Here's Velma. She's reading Bear Guide. Crazy Maze Trail. I haven't found Shaggy yet. Oh, there he is. He's, of course, over here. Just look anywhere there's food. And then after that, you basically just have, here's some extra things that you could look for if that was too easy for you. So, yum. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. I like the art a lot. It's very classic and fun looking. Very 1999. Anyway, those are the books that I have to look at. Of course, there's a million more Scooby-Doo books to look at, and I didn't like really go in depth in these. I'm sorry if that was kind of maybe disappointing, but I don't know. I had fun, so I was just hoping like maybe you would have fun just flipping through some of these with me for a little while. It's probably been a, a lot longer than a little while. It's been a few hours for me. I don't know how long the video is going to be. But, you know, hopefully you just had like a nice time, and this was different than just looking at a movie or an episode but it's still scooby-doo media so it's still on brand you know i just really needed to do something different that's a little bit a little bit more fun i hope you liked it i hope you had a nice little time with me if you did like the video i would appreciate it. especially this is very different i'm not going to do stuff like this too often but you know if you liked it like it subscribe if you want to see more scooby-doo content because that's like, that's like all I do on here. Watch my previous videos. If you haven't, the YouTube algorithm really is not happy with me anymore because I don't post a super huge amount and so it just doesn't promote myself anymore. I don't think I really have too much more to do on this video. So I think I'm going to call it a night and hope that you just had a nice time with me. Uh, I'll see you next time in Scoobytopia. Bye. Bye. <laughs>